Hi, this is Dolly Weber and welcome back to Strangers in the Oil. I'd like to cover a couple of other arguments that I have received frequently over the years and that is people responding by saying, well, I feel to use wisdom, <laughs> i.e. go to the doctor and then I can pray too. And the other fallacy that I've heard often is God helps those that help themselves which is diametrically opposed to what the Word of God says. They're kind of one in the same, and maybe I'll start by talking about the idols of old. Because when I was a child, I was raised in an evangelical home, and I remember thinking, like as a five or six-year-old, how on earth could people be silly enough or foolish enough to worship idols? I heard about idols all my life. Again, it was a conservative church, conservative family, but I, I seriously could not understand how people could worship idols. And I pictured them merely bowing down for the sake of bowing down and, uh, and paying homage to them. But it wasn't until I addressed this walk where the Lord had led me away from the answers of the world that I realized that we today are full of idols. Now, some would say, yes, I know, we worship football teams, movie stars, uh, musicians, but that's not the kind of idol that the Lord was opening my eyes to. I began to see that the Word of God gives us simple instructions for many things. And they all stem from the Lord's titles for himself, that he said he will be those things to us if we will trust him. And if we go to others, other than him, other than trusting him, but we go to the hand of man, that that is exactly what people did when they went to and when they still go to idols. And Correspondingly, it took on a greater meaning to me where the God of the Bible wanted a people that worshipped the one and only God. Get it? The one remedy, the one answer, the one healer, the one supplier, the one and only God. And that was foolish for the people of the world that were enticed by and led astray by many different answers, many different types of wisdom as the schools of thought were gaining more and more uh, and the disciples of people like Plato and uh, just in a lot of different realms, there were smarty pants <laughs> that were being raised up and people really took a liking to them. And they tended to want to make things more interesting, I guess, and feel that they were smarter than simply going to one size fits all, to a one God who said he would do it all. Correspondingly, the children of Israel also strayed. They were tempted from just simply trusting the Lord and looking to him to utilizing in some cases, in a very small way, like the idols strapped to the belt of the Maccabees, the 36 men that were killed in that battle, uh, sometimes it seems small, but they too were tempted into not just simply putting their trust in the one and only one true God of Israel. Well, today we've got the same problem. He has given us a simple, very, very simple remedy for our sins, and a very simple remedy for our sicknesses. And it's very rare that anybody says, you know what, I'm just gonna go to him and do exactly what he says and no more. We too have been tempted away from the simple truth, the holiness approach from a holy God to simply do what he said and then trust him. But we want to add upon that because of whatever enticing things we see. Other people are doing it. Uh, other reported miracles, you know, medical miracles or whatever. We have been tempted and we are following other gods when we do this. You know, Isaiah 50 has a real indictment to those who do that. 
the Lord says to them, um, who among you fears the Lord? This is Isaiah 50, verse 10. Who among you fears the Lord and obeys the word of his servant? Let the one who walks in the dark, who has no light, trust in the name of the Lord and rely on their God. But now all you who light fires and provide yourselves with flaming torches, go, walk in the light of your fires and of the torches you have set ablaze. This is what you shall receive from my hand. You will lie down in torment. Now, I don't know what could be more blatant than that, where the Lord is saying, look, I'm, I'm here when you have no other answers. I come in, I will be your answer, and I will come through for you. But for those of you that are providing for yourselves answers, just get out of here. Just go. You're not going to receive from my hand. Similarly, in Galatians 5, we see Paul addressing the Judaizers, the effects on the believers from the Judaizers that were still promoting circumcision. And that too was proclaimed as though, well, you know, add, yes, it's adding to it, yes, but it's good for you. You know, this, this will just help a little. Paul made no bones about his response about that. He said, Stand fast, therefore, in the liberty wherewith Christ hath made us free, and be not entangled again with the yoke of bondage. Behold, I, Paul, say unto you that if you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing. Let me say that again. If you are circumcised, Christ will profit you nothing nothing. For I testify again to every man that is circumcised that he is a debtor to do the whole law. So these are two clear examples of where the Lord wants us undivided in our approach, in what we do for ourselves, what we receive from him. Ours is to find out, okay, Lord, how do we receive from you? And it's very simple. It's very basic. And it's also based on faith. It's very faith driven. But we are to go nowhere else. And we are not to do for ourselves because that will hinder getting something from the Lord. God hinders those that help themselves. He will let them go and, and see the ramifications of what they do. But he is not going to help them when they're helping themselves. So that is an adage that is, must have come from the Satanist Bible. <laughs> I'm just kidding, but it's probably there. That has nothing to do with the word of God. The Lord is tending to us like sheep. It's very simple, very basic. And in fact, in this day and age, it tends to be too simple and too basic. And people have rejected the simplicity of that. Not only that, but we also have contaminated our understanding of wisdom. And I've heard people say, well, I want to use wisdom, quote unquote, as if that means going to doctors. And yet, Paul told Timothy in, in, Tim, in the sixth chapter of the first letter, he said, Timothy, guard what has been entrusted to your care. Turn away from godless chatter. And the opposing ideas of what is falsely called knowledge, which some have professed and in so doing have departed from the faith. You know, that same thing is happening today. I can't tell you how many quote unquote Christians have reported where one of their teenagers has gone to university, has gone to a college and has come back not, not believing in the Lord anymore. And I'm thinking, well, what in the world do you expect? Are they going to that institution to study from people who walk and talk with the Lord and acknowledge him daily and have a fear of God and acknowledge him as creator, as source of everything? Are you having them study with people like that? Of course not. Even in the alias Christian colleges, they're promoting godless chatter in most cases I can't say that across the board if they are talking about the Bible and there might be some that are really just giving uh, the pure word as the Lord would have them give, which says also go to Jesus to teach you. 
I doubt if that's happening in too many of those colleges anyway. But for a quote-unquote Christian parent to send their child to learn a, a body of understandings that do not even acknowledge the Lord, that is what Timothy identified very clearly, and he's not the only one, as false knowledge. And we're not to have anything to do with it. And I can tell you for sure that the realm of medicine is completely false. It's pagan, but it's completely godless. Those men do not start their day with a fear of the Lord and looking daily for what did the Lord tell me to do today? How am I to direct people to him today? No, let's, I mean, let's not even laugh at that. That's not godly wisdom. Therefore, we should, as believers, we should have nothing to do with it. So not only are we at fault by adding to whatever the Lord told us simply to do, but to do it in the name of wisdom, when it's actually the worldly wisdom, which scripture says clearly, uh, 1 Corinthians 3.19, the wisdom of this world is foolishness with God. For it is written, he takes the wise in their own craftiness. It's foolish. In 1 Corinthians, the first chapter, uh, where is the wise person? Where is the teacher of the law? Where is the philosopher of this age? Has not God made foolish the wisdom of the world? Yes, he has. For since the wisdom of God, the world through its wisdom did not know him. God was pleased through the foolishness of what was preached to save those who believe. Jews demand signs and Greeks look for wisdom. But we preach Christ crucified, a stumbling block to Jews and foolishness to Gentiles. All right, it's foolishness. What the Lord did for our sicknesses is foolishness to the world. To simply trust him, knowing that what he accomplished through his blood, through just one drop of blood, eradicates all diseases in the world. That's a foolish concept to the world. How in the world can we walk in the wisdom of the world and then go and, and imagine that at the same time we're praying? At the same time, we're invoking the help of the Lord. I'll tell you, he's not going to share any stage with anybody. He's not going to share the stage of his glory with any other realm of wisdom measured by the world. And nor is he going to share his glory with a man who has sworn an oath to Satan and his offspring. It's just not going to happen. We've been given a holy God. He is a holy God. He has given us a holy prescription, a holy instruction to be assisted with only in prayer and anointing oil by those holy servants set apart, consecrated to him. That's how the God of the Bible has paid for and wishes to dispense healing for those who believe and trust him. Forsake the so-called knowledge and wisdom of the world, because if you don't, if you are taken in by it, you too will lose your faith. I encourage you to press on, press towards the wisdom of God in all he has instructed. I look forward to talking to you next time. God bless you.